Stalingrad is widely considered to be one of the most important battles in all of history. It dealt the German army a blow from which it never recovered, and arguably won the war for the Allies. The battle was a turning point on the Eastern Front, blunting the German drive east and then driving the Germans back west. So, what if history had gone differently? What if the Nazis had won the Battle of Stalingrad instead of the Russians? To win the Stalingrad campaign, the Germans would have had to have made all the right decisions and then be very lucky. The region around Stalingrad was hugely strategic, since it allowed the Russians to flank the German positions in the Caucasus, and Stalingrad controlled the region, but the city itself was not as important as the battle would suggest. Thus, the Germans could probably have surrounded and starved the city with tanks, and then shelled the city into a pulp, followed by declaring a victory. By getting involved in actual fighting in the cramped conditions in the city itself, the Germans lost their greatest advantage, their tactics and mobility, surrendering the advantage to the Russians who had the advantage in number. The Germans should have bypassed the city itself. After significant fighting in Stalingrad, the Russians launched the unstoppable Operation Uranus, where they massed forces behind the Volga River and swamped the tired and badly supplied Axis forces, thus conquering the region and starving the German force fighting in Stalingrad. To beat this offensive, the Germans would have had to have not lost too many men in the actual fighting in the city, and instead built up defenses and supplies against the Russian counterattack on the Volga River. Even so, the Germans were still so terribly supplied that a victory against the Russians is uncertain. Thus, let's say the Germans are very lucky and able to hold the Volga line against the Russians. After the hard fighting of the winter of 1942-43, the Germans repulse the Russian attackers and drive south to seize the campaign goals of the Caucasus oil fields. The Germans controlling the Volga would mean that the Russians would be unable to reinforce this region besides using boats in the Caspian Sea. This would make it a fairly easy victory for the Germans, as the Russians would use most of their forces for fronts further north in Russia. And the Germans would form alliances with the local mountain tribes, and having minorities like the Azeris, Armenians, and Georgians switching their loyalties. Meanwhile, simultaneously, without the loss at Stalingrad, the Germans would still have enough men and willpower to drive forward, and so would try to launch a large summer offensive, like Kursk in our timeline. The German plan at this point was to drive up the Volga towards the city of Kazan, thus surrounding Moscow and hopefully leading to the defeat of the Soviet Union. This would not happen. The Germans were barely able to supply Stalingrad, even when they were doing very well, and the German high command would realize that launching an attack even further out on that front would be simply impossible. Thus, the German summer offensive of 1943 would likely try to conquer Moscow, based out of the much less weakly supplied Central Front. The Russians could probably guess that this would be Germany's next move, and so would be preparing for this offensive. Even with the loss of the Caucasus, the Russians would still outnumber the Germans, and would still have an enormous amount of strength left in them, and would still have been able to hone their craft and gain troops. The Germans would need men to conquer the Caucasus, and thus the Russians would likely be able to prevent the Germans from seizing Moscow in an almost complete replay of the last German attempt to seize Moscow in 1941. The Western Allies had two plans on how to invade Nazi Europe. The first plan, which was championed by the British, was an invasion of North Africa, followed by an invasion of Italy driving on Germany from the south. The second plan, championed by the Americans, was a direct attack on northern France in 1943 or 42. In our timeline, the first plan happened and was followed by an invasion of France in 1944. However, with it appearing as if the Russians were being defeated, the Western Allies would want to do something drastic to save Russia by distracting Germany in the West. Thus, they would do the more daring plan of invading northern France in 1943. This would be a disastrous failure. Look at the first few months of North Africa, where the Germans were able to inflict humiliating defeats on the Americans before they were able to adapt to the war, and that was a side theater where the Allies insanely outnumbered the Germans. Any invasion of France would be horribly rushed, and the troops would be poorly trained. Our timeline's D-Day could have easily failed if Hitler had made the right decisions at the right time. The Germans had not yet built the wall of fortifications called actors would balance out so that the Allies would lose. The use of troop-carrying ships that would have been used in the Pacific for an invasion of France would have slowed down America's island-hopping strategy, thus making the defeat of Japan slower.
Also, the use of resources for an invasion of France would mean that Operation Torch or the invasion of North Africa never would have happened. Instead, American forces would have sailed the long way round the Cape of Good Hope, landing in Egypt, helping the British forces there, fighting across North Africa east to west. This was a plan of the Allies, but was shuttled for Operation Torch. This would mean less Americans would be involved in North Africa, but still the Germans were so ridiculously outnumbered in this theater at this point that they would still lose. At this point, the war in Russia would become a stalemate, with the Germans being unable to conquer Moscow or the industrial heart of Russia around Moscow, but the Russians unable to seat the Germans from their lands. This would have to last in the 50s, with neither side able to defeat the other, and with the acquisition of nukes on both sides forcing a peace treaty. After the failure in northern France, the Allies would be very reluctant to invade Europe. The German army would look unstoppable and Europe an uncrackable fortress. The casualties needed for such a war would appear terrifying, and war fatigue would start to appear. It would be hard for democratic leaders to convince their populations to fight such a hopeless-looking war. The Western Allies would likely never follow up their victories in North Africa with an actual invasion of continental Europe, and would likely peel off side territories from the Nazis, like Norway and Sicily, and make peace with the Third Reich. Meanwhile, the Allies would divert their energies to the Pacific, still defeating Japan in this timeline. With the Russians stuck in a war against Germany, they would be unable to fund global communist movements, and thus communism would not spread beyond Russia, with the US being able to completely outfund the communists in China, and with the Russians not giving all of northern China to the communists, and with nations like Cuba being reconquered by the US without Russian protection. With Britain less tired from a less intense war, the colonization would be slower in this timeline as Britain would put up more of a fight to keep its colonies. Meanwhile, with most of continental Europe under Nazi control, it would mean that Britain would quickly become dependent on the United States for trade, military production, and basically become a U.S. puppet. The U.S. would become the dominant power over the Pacific, and the region would go into the U.S. sphere of influence with the Soviets too weak to support the local communist movements that would hurt U.S. power. And in general, the U.S. would by default become the world's most powerful nation, with the Nazis and the Soviets busy fighting over Eastern Europe, thus meaning the U.S. could dominate the rest of the world. The Third Reich would be America's main rival, but the United States would be so much more powerful that it would not be a balanced rivalry like that between the United States and the Soviet Union in our timeline, and be far more lopsided. With the war against the Nazis being pretty short for the Americans, and without proof of the Holocaust being found by conquering the concentration camps, the U.S. wouldn't have any really strong feelings against Nazi Germany. The Nazis controlling all of continental Europe would mean that they'd be hugely economically powerful, and so we should expect some sort of trade or exchange between the two nations. The United States is one of the countries Hitler disliked the least, so there would be no Nazi ideological reason against this. So we'd likely see some strange love-hate relationship between the U.S. and Nazi Germany where the two powers would compete but also trade with each other, kind of like that between China and the U.S. in our timeline. The Soviet Union losing its wealthiest and most modern regions, plus most of its coast would slink back into isolationist paranoia, cutting off most of its ties with the outside world and always keeping an enormous army on the German border, like some enormous North Korea. What if Altist, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed that timeline, please comment or subscribe, and please stay tuned for my next video. Thank you.